All right, so let's get started. Skin type one. So skin type one, she's just on the cusp of skin type one, skin type two. Fair skin, definitely gonna freckle, gonna burn in the sun, should be wearing a hat and a really powerful sunscreen. SPF 70 on the beach wouldn't be a bad idea. Photo type two tends to be our light skin, blue eyes, kind of fair hair, gonna freckle, and should be using a really powerful sunscreen. We always recommend over an SPF 30 for all of our patients, but the higher the sunscreen, the longer you get protection and people like this are going to burn much more quickly. So you've got SPF 70. Yes, so SPF 70, the market is going to be kind of phasing out the higher SPFs, but at least an SPF 50 or better, but getting one of those big powerful numbers is really going to be the way to protect yourself. And along with looking for the 70, you also need to make sure that it's blocking both types of rays? Correct. UVA and UVB. UVB is going to burn you. UVA is going to accelerate skin cancers and age the skin. Now one of the things that you mentioned is that you know you aren't necessarily fitting into one type of skin type. You said that I might be a 2-3. Right. You might be kind of right on the cusp. Because I burn initially and then I tan all summer. Exactly. You have fairly fair skin, so a burn is something that we would expect early in the season. Um, but remember that anytime you burn the skin, even anytime you tan the skin, it's your body telling you've had too much. So for people who are phototype 2 to 3, or people like me who are phototype 3, you're going to want to use a sunscreen that has some good protection in it as well. I usually use at least an SPF 45, um, but sometimes an SPF 50. Okay, and that's what this is, 45. Phototype 4. So this type of skin has a little bit of natural pigment, kind of a light brown skin tone. Going to have some photo protection as well, but minimally. So phototype fours can still burn if they're out in the sun for prolonged periods of time. So everyone, as we've said, needs at least an SPF 30. And now it's time to look at skin type five. And this is Dr. Dara Spearman, one of your um, partners. And so Absolutely. we're going to talk a little bit more about skin type five. So skin type 5 also has some pigmentation in her skin, and even though she spends most of her time working here, <laughs> she does make some time to get out under the sun, and she wears her sunscreen as well. Absolutely. I wear my sunscreen every day, a moisturizer with the sunscreen on my face, neck, and chest. And then when I'm out at the beach under an umbrella, <laughs> I use uh, regular sunscreen, at least an SPF 50. So it's a perfect example of someone with darker skin still going the extra mile to protect it. And then next is phototype 6. This is someone with darkly pigmented skin, has a natural SPF within their skin, somewhere between 8 and 15, so built in. And then also on top of that, you still want to photoprotect. Which many would think you wouldn't need sunscreen. Absolutely, but you do because you can not only can a phototype 5 burn if they're out in prolonged amount of sun exposure, but they can accumulate enough sun damage to actually cause what we call idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis, white spots. So it's kind of the reverse of the brown spots that lighter skin types get. I think this is a really good lesson to visually let people know what their skin type is, where they might fall, and reminding them about the whole sunscreen thing. It is absolutely important. I tell my patients every phototype, whether you're phototype one and you should wear a hat and a really powerful sunscreen, or whether you're phototype six and you should just have your sunscreen on to protect you from damage of tanning and kind of white spot formation, everyone should be protected. Whether it's sunburns or aging, you want to be protected. Absolutely. Thanks, Deanna. We'll be right back.